Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to add a product. You can add both physical products and digital products, physical being an actual item, for example clothing, accessories, food, things like that, um, items that can be shipped or collected by a person. And the other option is to uh, sell digital products. So these are things like um, any files, any images, um, any PDFs, uh, things like that. So in products that can be downloaded essentially. Um, so they won't require any shipping or collection or anything like that. They'll just need to purchase a product and then find, and then they'll be sent an email with the product included. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a physical product. So once you're in your dashboard and you set up the online store, you'll see a tab called store products. And if you go into products here, um, you'll see your product dashboard. So these are a few products that have already come with the site. So these are all physical products and all the products that you add will be added here. Um, so if you're ever looking for a product to edit or to remove, you just go into products and look for the product here. You can either scroll through each of the product or you can search by the product name. So to add a new product, you just want to click add new product and then you're given the option of digital file or physical product. Um, in this video, we're just going to go over physical product. Once the page is loaded, you'll see it's a blank version of the back end of a product. So it's things like the um, any images, product info, product name, all of that uh, we have to fill in ourselves. So the first thing you want to fill in is the product name. So for example, if you wanted to sell a yoga mat, you would just call it yoga mat or whatever appropriate name it is. Um, and this is the name of the product and it's what's going to show on the product page. It's, one, it's what's going to be displayed on the shop pages, things like that. The next thing you want to add is any images. So if you click on add images, you have the option of select of adding multiple images and not just one. So again, you can either upload images uh, from your computer or you can use media from Wix, whichever one uh, suits best. For product video, for product images, it's always best to use the actual product image and maybe how it's being used, things like that. But yeah, you're not limited to one image. You can use a few images as well. The next thing you want to do is add the uh, basic info. So the name being the name of the product, which automatically will should fill in once you fill in the name up here. The next thing then is to fill in the ribbon. And this is just a bit of text like new arrival or sale to kind of um, make this specific product stand out a bit more. Um, if it's a product that you're wanting to sell a bit quicker, if you're wanting a product to be showcased a bit more, adding that little ribbon will kind of draw attention to that product a bit more. Just to show you what it looks like, um, you can see this one product has the ribbon bestseller and this one is a bit more eye-catching than the rest because it's got that little bit of text over here. So the ribbon option is, the ribbon text is optional, but it's a good option to have if you are wanting to um, draw more attention to a specific product. And you can see with the ribbon, um, you it will show up ribbons that you've already used before. So for example, new arrival, if you've already used it, it'll add itself. Um, it just means then it kind of remembers the options that you have and you don't have to um, constantly make new ones all the time. So the next thing then is the description. And this is just a basic description of the um, product. So you want to add things like product size, uh, how it's meant to be used, any instructions, things like that. With the products as well, you can sort of stylize the uh, text that you have. So you can add sort of um, bullet points, numbered bullet points. Um, you can also bold some text as well um, to make certain parts more sort of eye-catching, things like that. Um, you can also add links. So if you want to link to an external website, or if you want to link to another page on your website, you can do that as well. Um, so if we highlight maybe exercise and then uh, click on the link tab, we can either link to an existing website um, or you can link to an existing page on your website, maybe to a blog, something like that. To kind of increase the internal linking a little bit. The other thing you can add is additional info. So you can add um, addition in, additional info in terms of um, for example, refunds and returns and whatever text you want displayed underneath that title, you would just add um, within that section as well. And then you can also add maybe um, how to care for your product. 
um, things that would make would be beneficial for the for the users to know, and you don't want it to get lost within like the product description. Um, so you can add it within the additional info section, and then it'll appear separately to the product. And then the other thing you want to do is come into the collections and make sure you assign it a collection. So as I said before, you can assign it to more than one collection or you can just assign it to the one collection. By default, it'll always assign itself to the all products collection. Um, that's just so it shows on your shop page. Um, but then you can assign it to another pro uh, collection if you want or all the collections if that's the case. And again, if you want, if there's a collection here that's not been created yet, you can just create a new collection just like that and type in the name of the new collection. Next thing then is pricing. Now this can be different depending on how, what kind of product this is. So for example, if this product is, comes just with one option, so just this um, has just the one option and no kind of color variations, no size variations, then you can just simply give it a normal um, uh, pricing like that. Um, and then if it's an on sale product, you can, um, then give it a discount. So if this product is not on sale, you can give it a percentage discount or a pound discount, um, or you can say what the sale price is, um, things like that. And then that way, when it's displayed on the site, it'll show up as a sale item and not as just like a normal item to kind of make that a bit more eye-catching. The next thing then is things like cost of goods and profit margin. So this won't, this information will be shown onto the user side. It's only be, it'll only be shown to you, and it'll be good for you to, um, just so you know how much profit you're making for each product, um, and it's good for kind of reporting as well. Um, so you don't have to use this, but you can use it if you want to. Um, so the profit and the margin fields fill, fill in by themselves. You just need to type in the cost of the goods. Um, whatever that is and then it'll tell you automatically how much profit you're making per product and how much the percentage of that product is but again the users won't see this it's just you who will see this and it'll be good for kind of your own kind of reporting things like that the other thing then is custom text so if this is if you're selling a product that can be personalized so for example if you're selling a product that um, can be personalized to people um, that can be personalized in terms of what name they want if you can engrave a name onto your product then you want to make sure that you get all that information before product uh, per, as someone buys the product that way you're not having to email them or call them back asking what personalization that they want so if there is custom text that they can add or some way they can personalize the product what you want to do is under the custom text field uh, click add custom text and then um, you can add the questions that they need to ask. So what name would you like? And then you can give it a character limit as well. If you know there's a certain limit on the length of the name or whatever it is that they're personalizing, you can give it a character limit. Um, and then you can make that a mandatory field or not. So mandatory field means that they have to fill in something with the custom text. Um, if not, then they won't be able to purchase. So it's up to you if you want to give people that option. And you can add a, a, a lot of different customizations. So you can add, if there's another customization that you want to add, same thing, you would just add the field title and the character limit and whether or not it's a mandatory, mandatory field. The next thing then is product options. So this um, would be useful whenever you are showing different options that the product comes in. So like different size, different color, different materials, you can give them different pricing options and you can set different sort of inventory tracking as well. So if we click add options, and for example, if you wanna give it a color option, um, so you can see color options, uh, if you've used it before, it will come up here. And you can either show the product as, like the list of colors as a list, or you can show it as colors, um, but it might not show the exact shade of color that you want, so it's always best to maybe just keep it as a list. But if the color, you just type in what color options they are, so for example, red, um, blue, green, and just every time you type in a new uh, product option, you just want to click enter to add the new option and then just click add. And then what you can also do is add another option, for example, size, and you could do small, and then you can actually specify maybe 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And that way people can sort of see, um, 
actual size options. So it's up to you how you want to add the size options. And then you just click add. So you can see the two size options come up here now. And the next thing that comes up is manage pricing and inv inventory for variance. What that means is you can actually set specific pricing and suspe specific uh, inventory for each of the options. So if we toggle that, um, so you can see these are all the variants. So for example, um, a red yoga mat in size small, blue yoga mat in size small, green yoga mat in size small, red yoga mat in size small, blue large or in size large, blue yoga mat in size large, green yoga mat in size large. So they'll make variants out of all of the they'll make variants of the variations of the product out of all of the options that you've set, and then it's up to you how you want to price them. So the base price we've set for the yoga mat is twenty nine pounds. So the way you would set the variant is by price difference. Price difference. So if you know that the small products cost um, the £29, then you would give it a zero price difference to keep it at £29. But if you know the large products are £10 more expensive, then you want to set 10 uh, for the large products. So now the red large yoga mat is now £39. And same with the blue one. So if you know that the blue large is also £39, then you want to set the price difference of 10 if, for example, say the green yoga mat in large is more expensive, it's like £20 more expensive, then you just set the product as £20, and then that's now a £20 difference between the small and the green large. Um, and then same with this uh, order status, or the inventory status, so you can set in stock, or if they're out of stock, things like that. Um, if you know there's a product that doesn't come in a variation, so for example, the yoga mat doesn't cut in large, doesn't come in red, then you can just hide that variant because um, you know you don't have that product, you, you never will have that product. Um, so there's no point in showing that option. Um, but you can always un unshow this as well, so you can either show or hide this variant. Um, but it's up to you how you want to manage that. And then you can also specifically track your inventory. So you can either set the status as in stock or out of stock, or you can track inventory and actually give it an amount. That way you're for sure not selling more than what you are than what you have and you're not uh, offering any kind of um, back orders or anything like that. So you can set them all to a, to its own specific um, inventory number, um, whichever one it is basically. But then once you're done you just want to click apply. And you can see all of the product variations here and if you ever want to come back to it you just click edit and just edit the product vari variations as normal. Um, you can also give them their own kind of shipping weight as well, so so people know how how much each of the products weigh and things like that. Um, and this will also be useful when it comes to shipping and delivery methods. If there are certain products that weigh too much to be offered free delivery or the standard fee of delivery, you might want to offer, uh, charge more for that delivery. You would need to set the shipping weight um, either within here or with uh, the uh, single products as well. Um, if there was no product options, then um, you would just um, add the pricing and add the inventory as normal. So you've got the pricing here, and then you can also track the inventory as well. So it's up to you how you wanna, uh, what kind of product that you wanna add. It just depends on if it's a product that has uh, multiple variations or if it just has just the one version of the product. You would just add the inventory and the shipping weight here. Um, and then you can also set an example for pre-order, so you can let customers buy the product before it's released or when it's out of stock, you can um, assign them sort of a pre-order, that way they can purchase the product, but then you just have to make sure you're always following up with that and, and sending out the product afterwards once it's in stock. If you'd like to set that up for a product, you just toggle this on and you can set a pre-order message. So add a note that customers will see on the product page during the checkout. So things like expected to ship by the end of June or end of March, whatever it is, and you can set a limit. So if the product has um, a certain limit, um, it means then only 50 people, for example, if you set the limit to 50, then only 50 people can buy, uh, can pre-order that product. And if you have variants, it'll apply to each one individually. So you can't set a limit to each variant individually. All of them will have that same limit. And that's it. So that's your product sort of set up. And then once you're done, you just click save. Um, if you are not ready to show this product, if you realize there's more information to add that you're not, uh, that you don't have just yet, then you can uncheck this button here that says show an online store. 
and that way you have the product saved but it won't show on the front end so no one will be, be able to see it only you'll be able to see it and then once it's ready you can just show and store again and then just click save to save your changes and you'll be redirected to the products dashboard again once you've saved and you can see your product there um, with all of the sort of basic numbers here as well um, with the basic sort of what type it is things like that 